the true leader the true leader a leader true with the heart so bright a leader true with the heart so bright the guides with compassion through day and night the guides with compassion through day and night alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome back to our series uh, The True Leader الحمد لله We have discussed a few things We are on our third episode uh, We are going to discuss those qualities within the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which makes him the most ultimate the best leader for mankind in today's uh, modern civilization when we look at leaders in the past we look at their uh, the things that they done the achievements that they made but what makes the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the most ultimate leader what characteristics or qualities he had within him that makes him uh, different from all other leaders um, truly uh, the main quality the main attribute uh, is the fact that he received revelation divine revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this makes him different from any other leader in the past um, but one of the main so in the first episode uh, we discussed or we I introduced uh, the different qualities and what makes him uh, unique leader as a general subject then we talked about his uh, integrity how he was what his tongue spoke that's what was in his mind and what was in his heart and then his action that was the the first quality we discussed that made the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stand out from all of the leaders today inshallah we're going to discuss his manners that what it was about his manners that distinguishes him from every other leader whether it's a prophet or non-prophet every other leader we're going to look at the uh, different uh, attributes that he had we're going to discuss his manners today so the Cambridge definition of manners is as follows polite ways of treating other people and behaving in public so that's a general uh, definition of manners imam ghazali says manners is a term used for the internal condition that allows an individual to carry out an action with ease and without contemplation so a person it's just natural for him to do something now, if one's internal condition is such that, that it allows him to carry out a good act rationally and then Islamically, then it is called good morals, it's called good character. And if one's internal condition is such that it makes him react or it makes him carry out a negative action uh, Islamically or morally, then that's called khuluq sayya bad characteristic or bad uh, character. Imam Ghazali further then says that he says compassion is the result of good manners and detachment is the result of bad manners. Detachment so being uh, loving and kind to someone this is the result of good manners and being adverse and uh, negative towards people or anything that could be uh, nature, that could be animals. This is the result of bad manners. Everything that we do, whatever we carry out, our conduct is based upon our inner conditioning. Uh, if that is positive, then we have good manners. If it is negative, we have bad manners. Um, now for an individual to have good manners, it is important. One may be a truthful and trustworthy leader uh, or individual but if he has bad character people would not want to be in his company for any longer than necessary Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ so what a great mercy it is from Allah that O oh beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you are soft gentle hearted towards them 
that you, what a great mercy it is upon you, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi that you are gentle upon them, upon who? Upon the companions, upon the people. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ that and if you had been harsh and hard-hearted, they would have therefore been anxious in your surrounding. Anyone that was near you would want to, uh, they would feel nervous, they would feel anxious, they wouldn't want to spend more time than necessary. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certifies the Prophet وسلم, and by telling him that what a blessing it is upon you uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are soft upon them, you are gentle, compassionate towards them. Uh, Abdullah ibn Umar states uh, or narrates a hadith, he says, Inna min khiyarikum uh, ahsanakum akhlaqan that from amongst the best of you, so if you take the best of people, the best of all people, right, the most beautiful Right, or the most distinguished one is that person that has the better character. So if we was to take, for example, if we was to collect a room of good people, right, truthful people, uh, or in every characteristic, or so any for, part of life, they have outstanding character. The one that would stand out further than that is that one who has the most decent character, the best character. And I could think of examples here in our locality as well, who from many different Islami bays within the out Islami, there are some whose character have mastered their character is such and perfected their character such that they stand out. People want to be in their company, subhanAllah. Hazrat Jabir radiallahu anh, he narrates, he says, Min Sa'adat ibn Adam husnul khuluq wa min shiqwatihi su'ul khuluq that from the fortunes given to the children of Adam alayhi salam, one of them is good character. Good character is a fortune given to the people, the children of Adam alayhi salam. And from the misfortunes given to the children of Adam alayhi salam, one of them is bad character. So a person who has good character, then he is fortunate. And a person who has bad character, that is his misfortune. Mawla Ali karamallahu ta'ala wajahul kareem, he narrates the following dua from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So he copied the dua and he presented it to us. He says, this is the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He says, Allahumma ahdini li ahsanil akhlaq. O oh Allah Azawajalla, keep me upon fine character. لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت Only but you can وصرف عني سيئها And divert from me bad character لا يصرف عني سيئها إلا أنت That uh, only but you can uh, take someone away from bad character So uh, character, a good character comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It is a fortune This is what uh, Islam teaches and this was one of those characteristics so this was one of those uh, specific uh, qualities of the Prophet ﷺ that made him the best leader that his character was just outstanding Hazrat Malik radiallahu an narrates that the Prophet ﷺ says I have been sent to complete or to perfect best character, good character. So if there was good character, I've come to perfect that. And that's what we find the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is perfection in character, SubhanAllah. Ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala an narrates, Addabani Rabbi fa ahsana ta'dibi. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, my Lord, taught me manners and therefore or thereafter perfected them. He perfected them for me. He taught me good manners and then perfected them for me. Sa'ad bin Hisham asked Hazrat Aisha about the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said, she said something amazing. She said, uh, she, she responded, uh, have you not read the Quran? Uh, he said, of course. 
Of course, I've read the Quran. She says, indeed, the characteristics of the Prophet of God, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is the Quran. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, al Quran, it is the Quran. What does that mean? That uh, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is telling you that his character is exactly in accordance to what the Quran asks or demands from a servant of God. Yani the Prophet ﷺ lived exactly in accordance to the Quran. He was the, 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 he, the Quran came, a book, and the Prophet ﷺ was the embodiment or the implementation of that Quran for mankind. Something very interesting here, and by no means is there a similarity, but I want you to understand something. Um, and this is specifically, uh, as a Muslim, we would appreciate this and we understand the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, angels, uh, books, the four main books that were revealed upon prophets. We understand Qadr, we understand Judgment Day. But for those people who are, might be watching, uh, who might not have that type of faith that Muslims do, imagine the one who knows you the most is your wife, right? Because you live in the same home, right? Uh, there's moments of uh, closeness or uh, close interactions. Um, you're there for each other through thick and thin, right? Uh, you've been through everything together. You spend a lot of time in company uh, of your spouse, your wife. Now, they know you in and out. And for you to get a truthful review or a character reference of someone, right? Getting it off a friend is one thing, getting it off a father or a brother is another thing, but getting a character reference of the Prophet ﷺ, of Hazrat Aisha, and for her to say that he lives in exact accordance to the Qur'an, that is amazing. If you was to take any example of even yourself and you was to ask yourself if someone neutral was to ask my wife, uh, uh, my character reference without being biased, what would she say, right? What would be my flaws, right? And then try to analyze that and compare it to great leaders who have come, right? And then try to understand the level and respect and the honor that was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where his own wife, right, when asked for a character reference of the Prophet Wasallam, she says that he was a walking, talking manifestation, implementation of the Qur'an, subhanAllah. Hazrat Anas radiallahu an, he narrates the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa when he would meet a person and shake his hand, he would not let go of his hand until the other person lets go. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not turn his face away from him until the other person turns. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wouldn't be seen relaxing his knees in front of others. Now this etiquette, it sounds quite straightforward, right? It sounds like, you know, that what's so special about that, one might think. But if you go into the depths, right, if you go into the depths, the Prophet ﷺ is a leader. Leaders tend to have this arrogance. They tend to have this, this kind of um, assumption that they are better than everyone else. Um, and in, in especially in Arab tradition, greeting someone was a big thing. Right, all over the world, greeting someone is a big thing. But in the Arab nations, this was an even bigger thing. So when greeting someone, the person to initiate the greeting was seen to be inferior than the one being greeted. It just logically, that's why it seems as if that the person who initiates, it's like you've let on to someone, right? But someone might reject you, like they, they might not. Uh, let, uh, they, they, they might keep you hanging, as we say in slang terms, they might keep you hanging. So 
giving salam to someone first, a person might think that he is inferior. You, you, you're trying to get someone's attention. But the Prophet ﷺ would always initiate the salam and he's the leader of all leaders. And he would also you know, shake the person's hand and he would not let go until the other person wanted to let go. And he would have let go of the hand as well in case someone uh, finds it rude or impolite. And then he would not turn his face from a person. Now this again is very uh, important. Turning your face. Uh, let's try to understand this concept. If you look at um, the kings and queens of this current time uh, or of the past, right? Um, and if you was to watch their body language, the way that they sit in front of anyone inferior, uh, and this is a custom, this is a custom of the kings and queens, right? That they will face their body towards one side, right? And the person who they are speaking to has to sit on uh, either side of the king or queen, they cannot sit right in front of them as equal, right? And the king or the queen, the body would be faced to one direction, their bodies will be faced towards a certain direction and their face would be turned towards the direction um, where the Prophet Wasallam he would focus his entire body, his eyes, his uh, face, he would completely focus upon the individual he has met, no matter who it is, no matter who it is. If you understand it uh, in comparison to common day or a modern day kings and queens, you will understand that the Prophet ﷺ was truly unique in his character and also he would not stretch his legs out uh, in front of uh, others, this was done again out of respect. He was a, he was a leader of all leaders. He could do so when he wanted to, but in case someone felt uncomfortable, in case there was uh, someone wanted to sit there, whatever the reason, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had this character which was different from any other character we have ever seen. Hazrat Anas then narrates, he says, when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would meet someone on a path, he would stand with them for as long as that companion wanted to stand with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he wouldn't continue until that companion continues. Right, so he would give the time that that person demanded or wanted Right, uh, he would give it, it, it was exactly perfect how the Prophet ﷺ would meet people. As a leader of the entire Arab nation, such were his manners. Uh, today, anyone with a small amount of respect, fame, or name finds it difficult to give time to their followers, whereas the one who led all the prophets in prayer in Al Aqsa. Such were his manners. Yani all the leaders of any time, 124,000 prophets, more or less, all of them are great leaders. He is the Imam of all them leaders, the leaders of all leaders. And this was his uh, money, uh, characterism. But we already discussed that the best from amongst all people are those who have the most beautiful character. So if all prophets have the best character, what distinguishes the best one out of those? It was the one who had the most unique. If all prophets were uh, ultimate in all their qualities, what separates them or what distinguishes them from uh, each other, what makes one of them stand out, it was the character. It was the, the, the character makes someone stand out from everyone else. Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam never relaxed his legs before others in case it took too much room, therefore making it difficult for others. If there was enough room, then there was no harm. 
يعني he would not even want those people in his company to be affected in any way shape or form he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would honor those who would come to him someone would come to him he would give them complete honor and respect and whatever they would ask for he would give by laying down his garment he would honor them so if someone came to visit the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were were to sit on the ground Prophet ﷺ, if he had a shawl, he would take the shawl off and spread it on the ground for that individual. Uh, this was a, a truly a unique uh, quality of the Prophet ﷺ, the way he, and this is a, you could imagine if you have a jacket on and someone's come and you sat outside and, or you sat on a wall or, or anywhere and you, you taking your jacket off for someone else to sit down this would be quite challenging for many of us but the prophet ﷺ was unique he, he would take his shawl off right and he would place it down to let someone else sit on that comfortably a person might think okay you know the person who's come sat down he might be a good person xyz the prophet ﷺ would take his shawl off even for strangers someone who he has never met before right he would take off his garment his shawl and he would place it down and he would sit him down with him if he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was resting on a pillow he would insist his companion on taking it so if he was resting on a pillow he would offer that pillow and insist it wouldn't just be a, a courtesy offer it would be uh, insist any yani the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would insist a person to take the pillow now a person's character is truly tested when he is at home with his close ones you see in public a person can put an act on for a very short period of time a person uh, in public can be very generous and offer a lot of money and donate he can you know be seen praying and he could be seen fasting uh, etc but in seclusion when he is at home with his family his close ones they that's the real test of character um the true colors of a person rise to the surface the prophet uh, the, the wife of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she says that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said khairukum khairukum li ahlihi that the best of people are those who are the best to their own family and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says wa ana khairukum li ahli he says from all of you people right and he he's basically not even this is not even a challenge this is not even he's made this confirmed statement he says from every person i am the best towards my family he's saying it with confidence and truly he was when he was speak this would be wahi when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was alone with his family he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be the most easy going most respectful from amongst people cheerful smiling hazrat urwa states there was no one more beautiful in character than rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when one of his family members or companions would call him he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would respond by saying labbaik labbaik means i am at your service hazrat aisha narrates that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never hurt anything with his hands not a woman nor a servant his hands were only used to fight oppressors may our lives be sacrificed for them hands that were only used for charity for good virtuous things uh, to fight against oppressors who were oppressing the weaker ones them hands were blessed hands his character was amazing generally the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was good to all people but with children the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed extra affection and this was his sallallahu alaihi wasallam's teaching brothers we went through um various different ahadith narrations regarding the character of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which makes him a distinguished leader from all leaders um truly character is something 
that makes a person virtuous, which makes a person attractive, which allows people to comfortably be around someone. It's positive energy. Uh, whereas bad character uh, repulses, moves people. People become detached from uh, an individual with bad character. So we, as a follower of the Noble Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should try to make our character uh, impeccable, right? And because truly a person can do much more by having good character. And uh, likewise, when we look at leaders and different people of influence, right, one must understand, or one can say with confidence that the Rasulullah Sallallahu had the best character. There was no one better than him. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The true leader, the true leader, a leader true with the heart so bright, a leader true with the heart so bright, the guides with compassion today and night, the guides with compassion today and night.